And welcome to another Monday live stream. Uh, we're going to do a, a, th a third episode on this devil guy, devil. Um, so welcome. And uh, as you'll notice, I, I kind of fiddled with some things uh, between streams. I was fiddling with some hair and things like that. So I um, need to share this with my, s with my peeps. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Share to a page. How are you guys doing this weekend? I should share this to a page rather than a group. One more thing. One second. <laughs> okay, share to a page. There we go. And how can I share it? Come on, share it. I don't know why it's not letting me share it. Hello, hello. <laughs> Well, I don't know why it won't let me share it to my page. Oh, well, I guess I won't share that. Okay. All right. Let's get back to it. Hey, Neil. Hey, Mark. How are you guys doing? Okay. So this guy is still just a block out, believe it or not. He's still just made of parts and pieces. I haven't, uh, I haven't stitched him together yet. And he still needs teeth. I was playing with a new, a new, well, I shouldn't say a new way of doing hair. It's actually the old way, the original way, but with some new techniques. So, um, not, I, I hate to say new, it's not new. It's just using Sculptress and some Orbs Cracks brushes. But what I love is, again, is that AccuCurve. And what AccuCurve is, is just, it changes the, um, the, the brush profile to have more of a peak rather than a rounded profile. And that's how I get these pointy, pointy tips and it works wonderfully for hair. So, hey, from Pakistan, how you doing? Hey, Frank. All right. So, yeah, and so I was just basically using Orbs, the Orb Crack brush. I wanna say Orbs Cracks or Orb Crack. I don't even, Orb Crack. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, all right. I love how the code is BO for brush orb <laughs> BO. Okay. So you see these okay, so it's orb cracks. Not orbs crack. <laughs> you know <laughs> orb apostrophe s like it belongs to orb. All right. That's that's the kind of week I'm having. It's funny. Okay. Um and I haven't even used these other ones like orb curve and uh this orb cracks two and three. Three is a little softer. I like one and two. So, okay. These are some great, great brushes. Yes, for sure, Neil. I will absolutely have to give a demo. I'll, pl I'll be playing with it here, but I wanna do a, a, a new video. I need to talk to you, by the way. Maybe after this, if you're still around. Um, okay, so let's, let's get some teeth some upper teeth in them, some gums, and uh, hopefully not take for <laughs> forever on this guy like we have been. Okay. I'm listening to The Midnight today. They're actually in town um, today. I wish I could go. They're in, in town doing a concert today. And uh, I, I still don't dare go to... Uh, uh, concerts and things just because the whole COVID thing. So I don't know. It'd be about, okay, awesome. All right, I'm going to split this because this is going to be the upper set of teeth. Okay. And I need to flip it around so it's pointing the opposite way. Oops, down. There we go. And like this.
Hey, what's up, Blitz? How's it going? I, don't, I never know how to say your name. <laughs> hey, from Holland. Hey, Nikki, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I'm still working on the devil. Thanks, Neil. Yep. So today is, well, the, the weeks leading up to uh, Black Friday. I'm, I'm thinking about running a, a promo, but not a, not a discount. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. I shouldn't say anything yet until I get it figured out because I always say the wrong thing. <laughs> okay, let me see. Control to inflate. I'm gonna make this too bigger. But what I was gonna what I was what I was going to say and what I can say is now is a fantastic time to uh, join us in the 3D character workshop because 2.0 is coming very, very, very soon. I keep saying that, but uh, there's just a few more little things I need to do, and we'll get it there. Okay. Hey, Katri, how you doing? And if you're a student of mine already, thanks for your patience. I know it's been a long time coming, but you, you still have access to all the stuff. It's just not very well organized yet. <laughs> Okay, what's up with this? Okay. It's Sculptor's Pro, but very low. That's interesting. Okay. So how is everybody doing? What are you working on this week? I always like to know. Any, any fun characters? Fun either uh, challenges, like if you've entered like the Art Station Challenge or Plenty of challenges happening all the time, I think. Let me make this tooth a little smarter. Awesome, Indy. Yeah, I'm I'm actually really excited to to launch it, to be honest. It's been a long time coming and uh I think everybody's gonna like it because of how it's organized, it's way easier to find everything. So that's a that's a thing that I'm really excited about. I'm gonna make these teeth shorter so they fit. You're gonna actually see the gums back in here. Oh, stylized Athena from Marvel. Nice. That sounds fun. I've been thinking very very hard about a YouTube channel of my own because. I, I mostly stream here on P Pixelogic live stream on the YouTube on Pixelogic's channel, which I, I want to keep doing, but I also want to be able to talk about, you know, other software that goes along with ZBrush, and uh, other other things like life things like uh, how do you stay motivated as an artist and things like that, because a lot of people ask me, and I have a, apparently I have a lot to say about it, so. I'd like to make it kind of official and make it a video that people can find and rewatch. Working on some, hey, what's up, Matt? How you doing? Um, reworking some old sculpts. You know, that's always fun to do, honestly, is like, because you're constantly getting better, hopefully getting better, you know, as an artist. And it's all, always fun to go back and like blow the dust off of some old models and re-render them and, um, you know, just just try and see if what you can do to make them better now that you have better skills. Hey, what's up, Tenji? Thank you. Working, let's see, working on Emperor Cusco. Oh, I, I love that movie so much from Disney 3D Realistic Recreation. Yeah, that's that sounds fun, Jacob. Hope you did a, a, a good job. Hope you uh, can do it some justice there. I, um, I haven't modeled anything from... Uh, Emperor's New Groove, but I love the characters in, in those films. Polishing some water effects in Unreal, man. I was, I'm always fascinated with special effects, especially in video games and film, you know, television. 
it's, it's definitely there's a there's an art to it a richard scary figurine hey what's up christopher hey what's up charlie yes i'm gonna get him busy again <laughs> if he's got some time all right just little tiny teeth here and then we'll get some asymmetrical ones up front. That's why I'm leaving this gap up front. So I can fill it with some, some more interesting asymmetrical ones. And thank you very much, Tenshi. Plenty of time to help you. <laughs> awesome. Love to hear it. Oh, really? Nice. You know, it's always nice to uh, have a passion, like a, whether it's a whether it's a hobby or not. You know, whether it's freelance or whatever you're doing, something to take a break from your daily grind to kind of get lost in. You know, that's why that's why um, I'm actually spending more time on this devil character because I'm having so much fun with him. He's so well designed from Sandro. Um, that you know, I'm just like you know this. This weekly live stream kind of forces me to make some characters and I have a lot of fun with it. And I really enjoy characters that have very interesting shapes and flow to their face. And this guy has, you know, obviously really interesting stuff happening. And so, and it's a big challenge for me to try and make 2D into 3D. That's, that's what drives me. So um, I've, I've been wanting, I've been thinking about, yeah, maybe I should move on from this devil and do something else, but I'm having so much fun that I'm just going to take my time and just talk to you guys and have some fun and hope you enjoy it. So, Hey, what's up, Shane? How's it going? Working on a dog sketch from Matthew Armstrong. Awesome. Yeah. So Matthew, I talk to Matt every single week, at least, at least once a week. I've been playing a new game with, with Matt and, and my other friend, Chris Shen. Um, it's called uh, Deep Rock. What is it called? Oh, it's so fun. Deep Rock Galactic. So it was on sale on Steam for like 15 bucks. And uh, I, I, picked, I picked up a copy for myself and I bought a copy for uh, three of my friends because it's a four player game. And it's basically um, mining as, as space dwarves. So you're like these space dwarves. And um, the you go you go in and ride this rocket ship to this planet and you deep dive and go mining for stuff and with and you have to like um uh, you you have to uh like shoot aliens that are trying to kill you as you're mining this stuff it's such a fun concept and the it's dwarves you know like D, &D dwarves like mining and it's just so fun so uh anyway been getting been having really a lot of fun with that playing it with my friends here and there so all right a rev 2k awesome work i think with chin could be moved down a bit yeah thanks this is still just a block out so he's still just in pieces um i haven't stitched them together um basically what i do is i get everything into place and then i start to uh, polish and move everything um into where i think it should be and yeah the the chin hair needs to be much of a further angle down and there's a lot I need to do so but thanks for the thanks for the feedback I'll get there <laughs> oh thanks J-Star okay so let me let me finish working on these teeth here does the devil reference have a full body he does not but I think I'm going to make him I'm going to give him a full body I'll make it up hey Joanne how are you doing yeah, because I'm having such... I was thinking about making him have this really huge body, this upper body, and this really small lower legs. I kind of picture it looking like um, like fawn legs, like back legs of a deer, you know, like like uh, like the fawn from Narnia, that guy, or the... Uh, I'm trying to think of the one from Hercules that, that has the tiny little horns and he's got the fawn legs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do I, I I'll try and do the whole the whole character. 
<laughs> Devil's in the details. It needs a rim shot. <laughs> okay, so here is where we go asymmetrical. Yeah, Phil. Is that his name, Phil? <laughs> too, too funny. Okay. So here's what the teeth look like. <laughs> yeah, I laughed, so that was funny. <laughs> okay. So if you guys didn't know, in ZBrush, duplicating an item, an object, you can, it's really, really easy. I like to throw in these tips if this is your first time watching me, is um, I don't cover everything, but I, I add in, sprinkle in tips here and there especially the easy ones, the very light, easy ones. And um, it's, it's very, very simple to uh, duplicate something in ZBrush. And basically, if you have polygroups like this, see all these teeth are in different polygroups. All you have to do is hold down control and click on one and it will mask isolate whichever object you click on. And then, um, and then you, can, you can hold down control and then duplicate like this, just move it. What mic, mic am I using? Um, it's a, I don't know, it's this Sure, sure one. It's a, it's a pretty spendy mic and I just broke it. <laughs> Look at, I just, I just pulled it off the thing. Oh my gosh, hold on a second. I wonder I've been having problems. SM7B, hey, what's up, Mike? Yeah. You know, Mike is actually a student of mine. Hold on a second. Gosh dang it. Okay, I gotta unplug this so I can spin it onto the, the thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll be making his hands. What in the world? What did I just do to this thing? <laughs> Look at, this is off, it's off my mic stand. I just pulled it off of here. Okay, hold on one second. I'll be right back, one sec. No worries. Hold on. All right, got it. <laughs> been hitting the gym? No, I've just been losing weight. Okay, that's better. I need, I'm glad, I'm actually glad you said something and I messed with it because it was about, it looks like it was about a smidge from falling off and just falling on my keyboard. So um, it gave me an opportunity to screw it on more. So, <laughs> all right, all right, back in action. So. Actually, don't be sorry. Uh, thank you. <laughs> okay, back in action. So, um, okay. So now that I have this, I only want one tooth. I don't want them both. I just want one. Um, how many years have I been studying 3D? Um, well, I first got into it uh, way back in 1996, 95, I would say. So... I've been doing this for about 23, 24 years. <laughs> that would have been a mic drop, like literally a mic drop, and it wouldn't have been fun. This is not a cheap mic. I, I, I invested some, so I've had several mics leading up to this one, and this is by far my favorite. So if you're in the market for a microphone, this is definitely the one to get. I guess, I guess this is, a, a lot of YouTubers use this microphone. 
and uh, a lot of actually um, singers that record. Well, Mike would know. Mike Black, hey, I'm gonna ask you, Mike, how, how popular is this microphone for like singers and, and audio production and stuff like that? So Mike does some music stuff. Yeah, Michael Jackson recorded Thriller on this microphone. That, that's right, that's right. Okay, so you'll notice how, um, just to keep on with the tips, um, you'll notice how when you duplicate an object, it stays in the same poly group as the one you just duplicated. So um, how, how you put it in a new poly group is um, basically you'll, you'll want to invert the mask. So hold down control and tap on the background. You can see it inverted the masking and then just hit control W. And what that does is it puts whatever you have masked into a new poly group. It's as simple as that. So now he's, this, this tooth is in its own new poly group. And I know there's not like, uh, you know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to kind of go back because I'm like, I know there's not like, nobody has one tooth in the middle of their mouth, right? <laughs> oh, let's see. I guess I'd get confused with this mini sub tools, but you don't open the palette. I, I really don't pay attention to the list of subtools because I just select them. Um, and I also try and keep them organized in groups. And then I will, you'll see in a minute, I'll, I'm will i gonna, I'm going to combine a bunch of them together and then smooth out the, the lines. So I, at the end, I will not have as many subtools, but I will have a lot for sure. Okay, anyway, let me go back. I'm, I, I was gonna do a single tooth in the middle, but I decided against it. I'm just gonna go, um, oh, somebody was asking me um, if I knew uh, Aaron Blaze. And yes, I know Aaron, uh, Katri was asking. Uh, he was an art director of Brother Bear. Yeah, so I actually worked on Brother Bear video game for kids for the on the PC. Um, that's not when I met him. I actually met him at the uh, Creative Talent Network conference in, in LA. And then since then, I've, uh, I've met him a few more times and I've actually, you know, uh, and it's been at like CTN and Lightbox, different expos. And he's a super, super nice, genuine guy. I love that guy. And he's, he's a brilliant individual and a, just a, the talent. He, I, I, sh I hate to say talent. Okay. I hate that word. The skill level that guy has is unbelievable, especially when it comes to painting with light. And painting animals, I've I don't think I've seen anybody with the with the skill level that Aaron Blaze has. Okay, so I I'm actually I I'm glad I'm glad when mistakes happen because then I can show you how to fix them. But you can you can see that these teeth are kind of off, but one part of me is like I want to keep them off because I don't want them symmetrical, and the other part of me is like, well, I want to show you how to fix it if it does go asymmetrical. So if I turn the floor on, you can see how it's like not in the symmetrical. So what I'm gonna do is invert this, control W, put it in its own group. So it's weird when it makes it white. Um, so I'm gonna select these again, turn off symmetry, kind of move them more into the center how they were. I'm gonna put them up here for a second. Okay, now I'm just gonna use um, mirror and weld. And that fixes the symmetry. It doesn't really, you can't really tell that it did anything, but it did, and now they're symmetrical. But, uh, okay. So I, don't, I just need to make sure symmetry is turned back, turned back on, and now I can move these guys back down. But I, now I, wanna, I actually want to make them asymmetrical. I usually save the asymmetry for the very, very end because I want to use the symmetry option to keep, you know, just to help me. Uh, do I know Gabriel Soares? I know, like, he's the person I look up to. He's he he is so good as a character modeler that it just blows my mind. Especially um, his Led Zeppelin model, the the lead singer of Led Zeppelin that he did. Well, his Michael Jackson. There's so many that he does that just blows my mind because he's not only modeling them but he's designing them as well. And I would love to be have that level of skill when it comes to uh, modeling. But I would love to meet him someday. I've never met him. I, we we've spoken uh, like digitally, but not, not in person. I would love to meet him someday. 
yeah, I think he um, and Dylan Ekrin, Gu Guz, uh, those guys are some of the my favorite modelers of all time. I can keep going. Danny Williams, Letitia, Michael DeFeo. And then there's a, then I'm a huge fan of all these um, traditional sculptors as well, like uh, like Jerome Rant and uh, Kent Melton. Um, yeah, there's just a whole whole bunch, a whole bunch. Okay. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. What I cannot grasp. I cannot grasp you block out you do, but use Z spheres. Would I still benefit from your course? Uh, you know the re. I mean, you, sure you can you can use Z spheres. I used to use them a long time ago, but I moved away from them because. Um, their Z spheres are connected together. They're stuck together. So the level of editability is, is less. I have more, um, control if I'm actually using primitives to block out. Oh, Katri, I don't know if I'd say that, but thank you very, very, very much. I appreciate it. Now he's got a ton of little teeth. I love it. Okay, I'm going to pull some of them down, though, because they're kind of stuck up in his lip a little far. Yeah, Kent Melton, I had the opportunity to meet him in person at CTN, and he was doing some demos of his sculpting. And um, these are a little too even. A little too... So I look for chaos when I'm modeling. That just means um, they're not all the same. Looking for stuff that's not all the same. I want some smaller. Maybe this guy. Smaller and shorter. There we go. Got mentioned in it. Internship last Monday stream turns out they decided to hire me full time. That's awesome, Cricket. Very cool. Congrats. So Proko, yeah, Stan Prokopenko. He's actually um I attribute him to my course success. Um he so when I was first getting started, oh I don't have my lights on. Let's turn these on. Come on, there we go. Um, so yeah, so Stan had his, uh, proco.com going with his, um, his course and his, his stuff. And he's been, he's been really successful with that. And I reached out to him and he's super duper nice guy. And he talked to me a lot about how to get a course going. And, um, so I, I, I thank him as often as I can, as far as uh, helping me get my course going, super genuine, really nice. And I, I got to meet him in person at the light box studio or lightbox expo a couple of years ago when we could do expos <laughs> yeah i gotta move that some more too still okay turn active curve off for a second i'll have to adjust this a little more and bend it down more okay Okay, so let me get some gums in here. You know, and I don't know if a lot of people know this or not, but I'm, I, I shouldn't say that I'm not a huge fan of Z-spheres because Z-spheres have their place for sure. And um, I actually, uh, Pixelogic commissioned me to, let's see, do, let's, where are they at? If you go to the Zizu character or uh, Zizu Z-spheres, so I essentially made most of these. I, I would say a good 90% of these I made for Pixel Logic. So and these are all made of Z-spheres. So, and you can absolutely start with these. That's not an issue at all. So it's just, it's funny that um, that's not my typical workflow, but it's completely usable and it's completely up to you, whatever you want to do. That's the beauty of ZBrush is there's no one um, workflow. I mean, just use what you want. You know, whatever, whatever is going to get you there. That's what you want to do. So 
I don't have you know the, the, the one workflow to rule them all. I, I do have my favorite workflow that I use all the time, but um, I don't, you know, I don't always 100% adhere to it and just say, this is the only way you can do things, which is because it's not true. There's so many different, so many different workflows. Okay, so I can definitely see that my hair, I'm using the Z squares you made in the book I'm illustrating for a client as I'm listening to you. <laughs> that's, that's meta, that's cool. Well, I'm happy to help you. <laughs> okay, so um, this hair is covering the, the smile that I gave him. So I wanna move it and squish it and move his ear back a little bit. So this is the beauty and this is why I use a, the, the, the block out method that I do is because you can see now this ear is too far forward and it's not, not giving me enough space to get the hair around here. So I need to move it back. Um, the Artabella, hey, would you say your course is for any level? I'm not a beginner, so I would like to know. Yes, um, it depends on what you're looking to get out of it, honestly. Um, but I have anybody from, from beginner all the way up to advanced. There are a lot of students in there that are advanced and I ask them, I'm like, so like the lead character design or the lead character artist from Funko joined my course. And I'm like, dude, did you get anything out of my course? And he's like, he's like, yeah, there's a lot of review and stuff, but there is some stuff in there that, that it was a good refresher that I wasn't thinking about. Um, and there's a lot of people that just, they kind of stay and they come back like Mike. Um, it's, yeah, it's mostly beginner friendly, but it's also for advanced people. And like I said, I've mentioned some, um, some traditional sculptors also join the course to learn digital sculpting. So if you're, if you're a beginner in the digital side, it will definitely help you. But if you're a beginner in the art side, it will help you, but it will help if you're actually more skilled in the art side, because I, I do teach that as well. But, um, like I said, I teach a lot of, uh, traditional sculptors like that use clay. I teach them how to use uh, digital. Thanks guys. Yeah, don't let me talk about it. I'll just let my students tell you about it. <laughs> Thanks guys. I'm so, I, I have to say, I'm super duper excited about the future of the 3D Character Workshop too, because um, like I said I, before, I don't, if you're just joining us and you've never seen or heard of me before, I'm adding a, um, it's kind of a mentorship of sorts. I'm calling it the accelerator program. So if you're looking for feedback and getting better on your art side of things, that might be something better. Well, it goes alongside the actual 3D character workshop. So you basically, I don't want you to join the accelerator program without having gone through the 3D character workshop. It's kind of a, a sidecar thing. Hey, Leticia, how are you? Yay, I was just talking about you. <laughs> oh man, how are you? You're looking for a mentorship more than just like a course. So, um, hey, if you wanna reach out to me, just uh, send me an email to shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com because I am taking on a few beta beta students early on just to make sure it's it's up and going. But um, basically, uh, that's awesome. Good to hear. <laughs> awesome, Leticia. Well, thanks for stopping by. So, um, yeah, speaking of Leticia, so I'm actually going to be bringing on some additional coaches to, to help with weekly coaching sessions. And so it's not just going to be me as a coach. I'm going to be bringing on some phenomenal coaches, like the top in the industry and, and, uh, and, and, and bringing on, bringing them on to give some uh, mentorship help too. Because I, I always think about it, I think about what would benefit me the most if I had to start out again today, right? If, if I had a choice of like going to, going to a box school, right? If I had like a local school, um, or even if I had to move and go to a school, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mention any names, of schools. I don't want to, I don't want to berate schools because they have their purpose. And I went to one, 
but you don't have to go to a school to learn this stuff. You just need to get some good feedback, right? Let's see, this is like really wide. <laughs> I need to fix this hair here. And I just keep thinking to myself, what would benefit me the most is getting proper feedback from somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, okay, why isn't this? Cool person. Hello and welcome. I have a quote from you in my resume from one of Shane's challenges where you were the a judge. That's awesome, Mike. That's super cool. Yeah, Letitia is one of my favorite people on the planet. She works at Disney Feature. She worked on the new Disney film that's coming out. So if you don't know who Letitia is, look her up. She's amazing. I don't know why Sculptress Pro is not being activated. What's going on here? Um, hmm. I better save this. It's doing weird things. <laughs> it's true, Letitia. It's true. And I, I'm sad I haven't seen you for so long. I usually, I used to, uh, see Letitia at least once, uh, once a year at like either CTN or Z Bar Summit or one of those. And we, we just dang this stupid virus, right? I can't wait until it's gone so we can hang out again. I always love to watch me work. <laughs> Thanks if I can actually get this to work. Oh my goodness. Um, come on, where? why isn't Sculptors Pro lighting up? What's going on? I'm having issues here. It's great out. There we go. Maybe if I hit the dang button, it would work. I don't know why it was giving me grief. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm comics. I'm glad you brought that up and hello. Welcome to the stream by the way um, So will your mentorship program cover how to best interview for a job that is part of it, right? So imagine having a, a person that is actually in the industry that has gone through it and has worked you know several different studios and uh, Maybe you come up upon a freelance job or a professional job, you know full-time work or something like that and they ask you to do an art test or something like that. And you just don't know if, if A, you should even do the art test, okay? Because sometimes studios are kind of fishy about that and they're just trying to squeeze work out of uh, vulnerable people. That, that has happened and it does happen. So they can help you kind of suss that stuff out and make sure that the test is legit and then kind of help you through the test a bit. Um, and then, and then talk to you about how to interview and, you know, what they're looking for and that kind of stuff. So, okay, let me turn this down a little bit. Let's see. So that is definitely part of it. And also, um, let's see, hold on a second. I'm going to turn the subdivide size up a little bit. Because for me, again, that that would help me out the most because when you are going to a, a, a big box school, that's what I keep calling them is big box. School. It's like a, it's like a tech school, right? And it's those tech schools that teach all sorts of things, including like, usually it's like game design where they know nothing about game design, but yet all these students are asking them to teach it and they're trying to get a degree in game design and it doesn't even exist like game designers there that's coming from a school that is not a thing uh let's see AccuCurve and Letitia if you're still here do you, you have you been using the, the new AccuCurve much um that's been super helpful for me in you in doing hair and pointy things like the pointing pointy teeth the ends of like I said the ends of hairs like this so if you see this see now that I turned AccuCurve on I can pull this out look at that okay let me just show you the difference this is really cool. Yeah, <laughs> show me the way. Okay, so let me turn this off, uh, the, the, the wireframe. And th that's how I made the points on this hair. I need to do it better, but. Um, so regular move brush. Okay, I'm gonna turn AccuCurve off. Regular move brush, let me get a, 
ba, 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 ba. I can just do it on this hair right here. If I pull it out just normal, I'll th I can do it on the back side of, of this. If I just pull it out like this, you can see the fall off is nice and round, right? Well, if I turn on AccuCurve and I do the same motion, look at that. So that's all it is. I don't know why they called it AccuCurve, but it's essentially pointy brush mode, right? <laughs> it's pointy brush mode. And, and that is, yeah, that's, that's essentially it. So when you come down here and you're wanting to kind of move these hairs around and make them pointier, what I usually do is um, I combine AccuCurve with Move Infinite. So that's also a new brush that I really love is this Move Infinite brush. And basically that just shoots the projection of the move all the way through the model. So instead of just, you know, normal brushes, they just act as a sphere. So if you just use regular move and you, you look on the surface, it's represented as kind of a disc floating on the surface, but how that brush actually moves is, or how it affects the mesh is it, it works like it's a sphere. So sometimes I like to do this. I'll, I'll just insert a sphere right here. See the sphere? Um, I'll push it into the surface. And that's essentially how ZBrush brushes work. They work as a sphere going, so that's why sometimes it will, it will uh, affect the back side of the mesh. If you have a really thin mesh, it's gonna affect both sides because the brush is actually a 3D sphere. Okay, so um, when, you, when you do move infinite, it works more like a cylinder where it shoots all the way through the entire thing, right? So if I grab this move infinite and I move this around like this, it's actually shooting all the way through. So it's not acting like a sphere. Hey, Rob. Yeah, so I'm glad you brought that up, Rob. Yeah, Letitia has this really cute, awesome little um, Gumroad tutorial. I don't know if you can post a link to it. Maybe Neil can, I don't know. Yeah, right? So then if I, I have this um, Move Infinite turned on and now I turned on AccuCurve and now I can grab this little point and it kind of also, um, it allows you to kind of, I think this is why they named it AccuCurve, because it allows you to kind of twist and pull it more. So let me go back. See, I was with the regular move brush, even with, um, if, if I turn AccuCurve off and I'm trying to get, see this hair that's, I want it to kind of curve up more. But when I try and move it with the move brush, see how it just kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't kind of curl with my brush. It doesn't come along with it. Oh, thanks Rob. So Rob just posted a link to uh, Letitia's tutorial, which is, I love the design of that thing, by the way, Letitia. And it's very, um, it's very like the, the workflow, Letitia and my workflow, they're very, very similar. So yeah, it's awesome. But I love the graphics and the, yeah, it's cute. <laughs> and it's very uh, great information, well, well presented. That's why we got to collaborate, Letitia. <laughs> okay. So, um, so check this out. So if I turn, if I go to move infinite and I have AccuCurve on, check this out. So now when I move it, see how it, it allows me to curve it more. See, I can pull it down and it's like, a, it's, it's a little more forgiving and I want to say spongy, but more controllable. So now I can give it a better curve because move was just kind of skewing it from side to side rather than curling it. Um, where is that in the regular UI? It's hidden. Okay, so if you if you didn't know this, um, you can hover over a, well, you're not going to know where it is because you don't know where it is in the UI. But um, basically, if I if I hover over the button and I hold down control, it, at the very bottom of this tooltip, it shows you where the button path is. So it says button path. It's under brush, curve, accu curve. So if I go up here, brush, curve, and it's right there. So you can just pull that bad boy out onto your own user interface and get access to it. And it works like topological where you can turn it on or off for any brush. That's why it's on my user interface because it's, a, it's kind of a brush mode. And you're essentially just temporarily setting the, the brush fall off to be a point rather than a curve, okay? 
And then, um, and then move infinite is just another brush they've added recently, which is super nice. Yeah, Nick, for sure, right? It's kind of changed my workflow. I mean, look at how curly I just made that thing. And it's, yeah, it's really easy. I, easy in quotes. Easy is relative, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is in my new user interface. So is this. And I'm going to do it right now because I want to show you guys how easy it is to adjust your user interface. Um, if you guys don't mind. Am I the only one having bad video quality? Uh, Lionel, try and uh, refresh your YouTube and see if it gets better. Okay, so this trim curve brush. Yeah, I need to, I need to update it. Um, okay, this trim, see this trim curve brush? See, I only update my user interface when there's something like really that I've changed heavily that, I've, uh, that I need to update it for. And this, these three things kind of warrant a new update. Okay, so um, there's new knife brushes and they're fantastic. And I wanna show you how to get rid of this trim curve brush in the, in the UI and replace it with the knife brush, okay? So basically all you have to do is go up to preferences, go down to config and click on enable customize. And you'll see the user interface kind of shift like this. And that's how you know you're in customize mode, okay? And now if you wanna get rid of something on your user interface, all you have to do is hold down control plus alt and then see like this and let let go okay so now it's gone there's nothing there and all i have to do oh my what are you saying fix your projection off the spotlight oh i i are you talking about um the spotlight projection being off by default is that what you want is that what you're saying cricket <laughs> I have not used Z Startup because I that's somebody else. Somebody else wrote Z Startup, and I don't own it, so I can't ship it with my user interface. Um, so otherwise, I would, you know. Okay, so see how that's gone. Now I want to put the new knife brush in there, but as you'll see, I can't do the I can't pull the knife brush out of this menu. I open this menu by pushing B. You have to pull it out of the brush menu, so up here. Okay. And how I get one of the brushes, you, but you can see that knife is not up here, right? I need to get it up here so I can pull it down. And um, let's see, here's trim curve right here. So I'm gonna grab this, hold on a second, brush. Okay, I'm gonna click on this and then go grab the knife brush. So knife curve or knife lasso. Um, I'll probably use the knife lasso more. Hey, what's up, James? So I'm gonna click on that knife lasso. And then you'll see it's been added to the bottom of this list. And now I'll have to do is go control plus alt or, or command if you're on an Apple, drag it down here and see how it like lights up. But I can kind of move it up and down a little bit within here. And I wanna make sure that it's up towards the top, okay? Trim curve is still useful because it cuts through multiple poly groups. You're probably right, comics, but I would I think I would use it way less. So I only put brushes on my user interface that I feel like I would use a lot. And I think I would use the knife lasso way more than trim curve because of its symmetrical properties. Like I can it'll cut across symmetry and it will the way it cuts is much more useful to me. So I think if I'm gonna use trim curve, I will probably go diving into the brush menu to get it rather than it being on my user interface. And I think I'm gonna keep clip curve because I like to um, smash the geometry without cutting it a lot. I, I use that a lot. Like I'll, I'll smash like the bottom of feet and things like that. So, okay. So anyway, now that I have this knife brush up there and I like it, that's, that's how, you know, I'll just leave it like that. Now you go back up to preferences, turn off enable customize, and then hit store config, okay? And now every time I open ZBrush, um, the knife lasso will be there rather than the trim curve brush, okay? Yeah, the cuts have super clean topology with the knife brush. It's crazy how well that works. And it will take the, the, uh, the density of the mesh. Here, I'll just show you with this knife lasso. So it'll take the, the closest density it can find next to your cut, like if I do this, 
and it will fill it with essentially that same density. And look how nice and clean that is. So if you use the trim curve brush, well, the, the lasso brush works across symmetry. So if I look at it from the front and I cut it out of this side, like so, you can see it works across symmetry. See that? And the trim curve brush, um, this one, it does not. It only, it's, it's slower. And if I, if I try and do what I just did, like be kind of crazy about it, like this, you'll see what happens. It just, uh, it just does some wonky stuff. And it basically does like a fill hole rather than the other one kind of works like a live Boolean almost. So if I'm using the last, the knife lasso and I'm doing some crazy stuff in here, I mean, it'll do it. It'll still cut it. <laughs> like there's no way the trim curve will, will do that. Right. Um, and it'll fill it with a nice, even quad topology. Anyway, it's super cool. I love it. Okay. Back to the hair. And this, this, this is a little, <laughs> a little too curly for his hair, but I like it. Okay. Yeah. See the, he didn't, uh, Sandro didn't c uh, curl it up that high. So I'm just going to roll this back to where it wasn't as curled. Maybe that looks like a growing plant or something. That's funny. Maybe like that. Okay. Oh, are you serious, Mark? Z startup belongs to Pixelogic. Are you kidding? Oh, geez. I thought it, I thought it was, why did I think it was someone's, it belonged to somebody that had wrote, written it. I don't know why. That's good, Mark. Well, maybe I will. I'll have to get permission from Pixelogic and make sure it's all, it's all cool with them. And maybe I'll le release a Z startup with my user interface. That would be awesome. There's a button to remember sculpture settings. Yes, it can be turned off. Adaptive. Oh, can that Z startup? Oh, awesome. Okay, I'm making myself a note. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Nice. I will definitely reach out to them and see what's what. Yeah, James, 3D stop motion. You can actually um, record your sculpting and make it into an animation if you want to. Okay, so looking at this, I actually want to make more points. So see how these hairs are kind of even? There's these four, they're kind of even. I want to bust them up into more, more hairs. Um, and now with this, with this workflow, it feels to me it's a little bit easier than it used to be. So again, with AccuCurve turned on, see it's just it just works i love it i can just bend it animating makes you sad um you know i'm it's you're not the only one i was uh i was an animator for five years of my career and i did motion capture and i just realized i was a better modeler than an animator and i ended up just kind of going the route of modeling. Have I played around with Sculptron? I don't know what that is. So no, I have not, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, to kind of pull out, well, I'm just gonna use move with AccuCurve. And I would usually use, don't, don't let Ashley let, I hope Ashley doesn't hear me say this, but uh, move with AccuCurve turned on is actually a little, I like it. I like it a little better than Sculptress Pro because it gives me a, a tad more control. So I'm just pulling this out. Oldest ZBrush user I know? Uh, probably Paul Gabery. <laughs> I know, Mike. She's going to show up and start chewing me out. I'm waiting for it. See, look at that. Look how this pulls out the spikies so brilliantly. And so now that I have that, I want to cut into this so I can grab this detail brush and just kind of. So 
sometimes this detail brush is wonky. So I'll turn over to the Damien Standard brush. Nope. B, D. Where is it? BDS. Why isn't it? Okay, there it is. Oh yeah, Maddie, she's great. Well, that's, you know, that's just another example of like how many workflows ZBrush has and how, you know, anybody can find their own workflow, flow, their own preference, what they like to do. And, and change it over time too. Like my workflows changed. I used to use Dynamesh a lot. And now I don't use it much. Because of Sculptress Pro. Sculptress Pro came into the, on the scene and I just kind of adapted it and I like it better. And there's a lot of people that don't and that is totally okay. You don't have to adopt somebody else's workflow just because they like it better, you know? It's whatever works for you. Some people still like to go model it somewhere else and bring it into ZBrush. You know, model their low resolution cages like in Max or Maya or somewhere else. And that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. I think I'm gonna add one more. Do I want to? I'm also going to 3D print this and I got to think about the hair is not getting too small. Like I'm thinking about making one more in between these two, but I think it would be too small that way. Do I? Hey, what's up, Todd? Holy crap. Todd Beeping Sheridan. Wow. Talk about a blast from the past, brother. How you doing? Um, I do not have it on a hotkey. I just have it on my um, on my user interface because uh, I'm not <sighs> always. Be yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um. I I I have my user interface set up so I can have my Cintiq down in my lap without using very many hotkeys. Um. So I I, I usually the only hotkey I have set up for zbrush like the only one other than like some default ones like c for pick color and you know just your typical control shift alt and um but i usually use the hotkeys that are on the sides of the cintiq for that but specific ones um like different brushes and things i will usually just stick them out on my user interface so i can go get them but um uh, yeah so the only hotkey i've ever really set up for myself is the, my custom menu, which is set up to number two on my, on my keyboard. And then I set that to the back button on my, um, my pen. So wherever I hit that, it'll just pop up underneath my pen and I can get to it really fast. So how have you been, man? Holy cow. So I worked with Todd a long time ago at Glyphix on Advent Rising. Man, it's been a long time. Yeah, Todd is a fantastic uh, sc sculpting artist, modeler, an all-around great guy. Man, I miss you. I we we need to hang out, do some lunch or something. All right, let's see. I hope you've been good. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna make some gums here. So, so just Todd, just really quick, not to interrupt, not to interrupt the, everyone else, but just, just something that made me think about you not too long ago was, um, my son is working at us synthetic and yeah, if you know, you, you know where that is <laughs> and they've completely changed that building. Like they took over the building that we were in and now it's completely changed. 
Okay, so yeah, pretty crazy, right? It doesn't even look like like they completely changed the entrance like the you know how we used to enter from the south side it's completely reworked all right i'm just moving this uh these gums around here You can only really see the gums from here, but I'm going to pull them down all the way and around just so you barely see them as they go around, just in case if you ever saw them from down below or something. Oh, I still have AccuCurve on. That's why. Now, that's that's the thing with AccuCurve. Sometimes, sometimes you don't want it on. Well, most of the time you don't. So if you're just trying to nudge, like a, it's almost like a ball of clay. If you're just trying to nudge a ball of clay around and AccuCurve is on, you're gonna hate it because it's this weird spiky brush fall off thing. You're not gonna like that. And since it's in its own sub tool, I can uh, turn on transparent and I can see where the gums go right through the inside of this thing. See now I'm, I'm having a hard time with the, I wanna, I wanna curve it down here and so now i can turn accucurve back on and i'm also running out of geometry so i'm going to smooth that down a little bit and then i can z remesh it okachi thanks okay so so you can see the geometry isn't that great um and i want more geometry in here so i can start to curve it so what I'll do sometimes is just Z-remesh it at a very, very low poly count. So here's my custom menu that I pop up. You can see it's the target polygon count is set to the lowest it can go is just uh, 0.1. And I can, even though I, I have, I don't have any other groups, but if you want to, you can turn keep groups on if you did have separate poly groups and just hit Z-remesher. And it, since it's so low poly in the first place, it's not gonna take very long. See, it gives us nice clean geometry. Oh, hey, what's up, Angry? How you doing, man? Have I ever suffered from art block? Who hasn't? That's the real question. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, okay, so basically what I can do with this is um, I can turn on the accu, cur accu curve and I can start to move this around. See how it's not skewing the mesh? It's actually starting to curve it, which is... Uh, way more control, but as I reach the center, I have symmetry turned on, so I can't cross the center, right? So I, I want to cross the center. I'm just gonna put these, I'm gonna do auto groups, so I can get rid of this, this side. Just delete it, there we go. And I'm gonna turn on the floor so I can see where, where center is, see the center, and I'm gonna turn off symmetry. That way I can pull it across the center. All right, James, thanks for hanging out, man. Okay. And then I can use inflate, just kind of inflate it a little bit. And now if I do a, I'm gonna, I gotta turn off local symmetry. Otherwise, if I do a mirror and weld, it's gonna do this. And that it's gonna mirror and weld it around itself. And that's not what I want. I wanna mirror and weld around the world axis so I turn off local symmetry do mirror and weld and then I get this mess okay I don't like this mess <laughs> I'm gonna undo that and just kind of fix it a little bit better okay I'm just gonna kind of pull that back but I can remesh it again after I mirror and weld it I don't know why it's giving me this mess but I'm gonna pull it across this symmetry line Okay, now let's uh, mirror and weld it again. There we go. And then I can Z-remesh this now. Uh, let's see, boom. Let's see what it gives me. Z-remesher is like a box of chocolates. You'll never know what you're gonna get. 
but this one is good. Yeah, thanks, Neil, for all the all the links. Um, this this uh, original art concept is done by the amazing Sandro Cusso, and he's worked on like Disney feature films. Um, I got to turn on symmetry here, and uh, like the movie Klaus. I think that's how you say that, Klaus, but Klaus. That Netflix, I think it's still on Netflix. Is it not on that uh, that Christmas special? Okay, so I'm gonna pull this forward. And I can also turn on dynamic symmetry to get it so I can kind of see what it's gonna look like uh, after it's been subdivided. It's like a preview. What's the difference between um, BDS and your detail brush? Well, my my detail brush is actually um, it started out as an S an SK pr brush, so I can't even remember. I I feel so bad, like I can't. I don't know how to say his name. He's another streamer on here, S Sakaki, I think his name is. Um, but he goes by SK. That's his his initials. And um, I started with that one, and then I just tweaked it to make it how I want it, how I like it, and then gave it a new um a new uh, icon and basically what it is it's a smoother version of the damien standard brush a lot a lot more smooth <laughs> does this devil have pants or is he naked <laughs> like the red guy from counter chicken i think he's naked he just has like a tuft of hair down there <laughs> that's how i would do it cricket i I'm, i agree with you i wouldn't fight you over that because i agree with you I think I'm gonna put one more tooth back there, just a little like a molar kind of a whatever back there. And I gotta give him more teeth across the bottom too. Oh really? Aaron Blaze says, one software you still wanna learn. I, I actually offered to teach him ZBrush. So I don't know if he'll ever take me up on that offer, but he's he's got plenty of ZBrush friends too. But I feel like the way I teach it would um, fit in most would fit in with the his philosophies of how he draws so i don't i don't know okay these gums are too dark i'm gonna lighten them up and color them in there we go uh what do i think about nft um i don't i don't really have an opinion on it honestly i'm i'm just kind of in a watch and wait mode to see what happens with nfts because I can't quite tell if they're just a joke right now or if it's a legitimate thing. But right now it feels a lot like a joke. How many years did you work with ZBrush? Um, I think I'm going on like eight or nine. Yeah, Tony Cipriano, that's, that's who it was. So he is Aaron Blaze's childhood friend, colleague for 15 years. Yep, and I think he's done a course for Aaron Blaze's uh, workshop and that's that's what who he's learning it through i'm sure okay i'm actually going to z remesh this at a higher resolution let's see that might be too high but we'll see yeah i was just i was just re reading this this twitter feed this morning that was somebody had bought some nft you know it's like the 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 collection of some monkey head that the the guys the the artist is just making like new versions of this monkey head over and over and over again and one guy bought one of them for like 200 grand or some ridiculous amount and then everybody else is like so somebody was trolling him saying hey i bought the same one and like posted the same one right below and the dude got so irate he's like you can't do that i bought it and blah 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 oh my gosh it was just it's just kind of a, a com you know it was just comedy to me it's like what is going on with these nfts and then the funniest thing <laughs> was the uh somebody posted a meme of the emperor from star wars and he's like he's like turns out these are fungible <laughs> something like that <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was it was hilarious. I was laughing quite hysterically about that. Okay, uh, but I yeah, I still I really don't know what to think about it. I don't. 
it feels pyramid schemish to me. I'm like, what? I, I understand the need of trying to, to have an original piece of art in the digital space. I get that, and I know why people want it, just, just so it makes sense. But at the same time, I'm like, is this really how you do it? Is this? Anyway, I don't know. What software are good for working next to Zverse? Oh, a whole bunch of them, actually. Lots, lots, lots. So there's, uh, it depends on what you're trying to do, right? If you're trying to push this over to uh, like a game engine, then you'll want to retopologize the mesh. And you can take it anywhere, honestly. You can take it to 3D Studio Max or Maya or any anywhere that does retopology. You can even do it in ZBrush. Um, their, their tools are getting better for retopology. Um, and then you can use it for like rendering. You can take it to Keyshot or Maverick or any of those renderers, um, even, even over in Maya with Arnold and that kind of stuff. So it depends on what you're trying to do. And then you can take it to other programs to, uh, well, you can actually 3D print it right out of ZBrush. That's what I've done a lot. So the, the things you see on my shelf, um, most of these I've printed out well, I haven't printed them out, but they've been printed out <laughs> um, by my friend Jake at Form Labs. So, um, but I did print out this one when I worked at Disney. That's Boba Fett. And then most of these have been printed on Form Labs printers, and I have a couple Form Labs printers behind me. But uh, yeah, Brutus, I yeah NFTs for mo money laundering. He hello, Carlos. <laughs> I I I I can't disagree with you there. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, let's see. Da, da, da. Isabella. I'm just trying to see if I missed anything. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna give him that back tooth there. I think I'm just gonna put a new cylinder in there or a new uh, sphere. Let's grab this color first. Oh, colored the gum so well. I thought I filled that with a color. I guess I didn't. Grab this color. There we go. Um, Katra, not not at the moment. I honestly I don't think about these things until like the day of. I'm like, what am I gonna sculpt today? I guess I better go find something. <laughs> Unless it's something like this guy where I'm having a lot of fun with it and I want to keep it going. Then I'll just you know I'll keep at it with the same one. Like that mouse, this mouse right here with the big blade. I just found that just surfing around one day and I reached out to the guy who did it and I'm like, hey, do you care if I sculpt that? And he's like, oh, I'd love it. I'd love you to do that. So um, I ended up just sculpting his mouse and it, it worked out, so. Anyway, yeah, I don't really, I don't really plan that stuff out. I should probably. I love these uh, Monday live streams for this reason because it gets me focused on sculpting something for myself where I usually don't have the time or energy to do it. It kind of forces me to do it. Somebody was asking about uh, art blocks and I can talk about that more if you want me to. Let's see. Da, da, da. Go by normals. I'm working hard surface. I really want to know after ZBrush what software I should learn. Like I said, it's it's completely up to where you want to focus your efforts. Like what 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 you want to do, you know? What you want to do should dictate what software you should learn to do it. It shouldn't be the other way around. 
I saw a streamer who makes the retopology with ZBrush. He explains it's the only program where he can modify the high poly and low poly mesh at the same time. That's interesting. And, and uh, that's interesting because once you, once you, I wish it, I wish ZBrush would keep the snap. So like, I wish the low poly would stay snapped to the surface, but it only snaps while you're drawing it. That's the biggest disconnect that I have between the two. And I've been, I need to talk to, uh, pixel logic about it some more to try and figure out a way to keep the snapping on but um hey <laughs> what's up jimmy how you doing man i thought you might like this guy i think yeah you've you've dropped by when i'm sculpting him before it's taken me forever but i'm i'm enjoying this one so uh yeah i was wondering what you thought about him <laughs> oh thanks so much yeah I'm i'm really digging this really digging this one just kind of working through the teeth here. Um, so that honestly, just to go back to your question, that's that's why I don't necessarily do a full retopology inside of ZBrush because, like like I said, once you once you snap it to the surface after it's snapped, it's no longer snapped anymore. Like um, in other programs, there are some modifiers that you can add to where you move the high resolution mesh and the low resolution stays snapped to that surface. So, um, and I don't, I don't know if it's even possible. Thanks, Jimmy. So if you guys don't know who Jimmy is, Jimmy's a phenomenal sculptor. I was just talking about um, sculptors that inspire me and, I, and I, I failed to mention Jimmy. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I was just kind of going through a list in my head because um, we talked about Gabriel Sorez and uh, just a whole bunch like Guz and um, and some some traditional sculptors and I I should have mentioned you and Paul, you guys you guys both inspire the hell out of me so super super nice work. If you haven't seen Jimmy's work, go check it out right now. Putting on the pressure, whatever. <laughs> Just keep being awesome. No pressure. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep these these front teeth kind of square on the top because I think it's funny. I wish I could play the music that I'm listening to for you guys. You still see yourself new in the field. <laughs> Got 40. I've been doing it for uh gosh, 20 20 something years. But yeah, I, I, as an artist, well, as anyone, honestly, I think you, you keep learning until you die, right? That's kind of uh, just the human nature. Unless you just give up for some reason. But yeah, never stop learning. Keep moving forward, as Disney has said. All right, let's make a asymmetrical one. Get these a little closer together. Hey, what's going on? Oh, you know, I'm always doing like family stuff on Sunday nights and I, it's, it's hard for me to catch a stream, I'm sorry. But how's it going? How's your, uh... so Ian's another streamer, IR, IR Sculpts, that's Ian. He's uh, he's not only one of my students, but he's also an, uh, a streamer on here on Pixelogic's uh, YouTube slash Twitch channel, and he's amazing. And he streams on Sunday nights right now. And he's he's doing a an anime of an anime resculpt of uh, Demon Slayer, and it's looking awesome. Just failed with the donut. Um, yeah, that's a different program you're thinking of. So this is ZBrush. Hello from Jamaica. Okay, I'm gonna do some asymmetry here. All right. 
yeah, I'm liking that. That's kind of cool, but they're a little longish. A little long in the tooth. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Yeah, you, you just want to know what he's whispering to the guy, right? He's like, you're going to go over there. <laughs> All right. I got to extend the hair up behind his horns back, you know, longer, but I, I really am digging this, uh, this way of making hair. It's, it's my favorite. I need to make one more little, little swoopy bit between these two. Yeah, Letitia was in here earlier. Tisha Gillette, she was, yeah, she's amazing. All right. Let's see, did I miss any question? Oh, how'd you go about making the stylized hair? I've yet to find a good workflow for making this tough stuff. So, um, yeah, Adder Lovely. I. I just started experimenting with this. So two, I think it's last session, you can watch me make this beard. But essentially what I did, or what I've, it's kind of a arm, like arms, what, you, what would you call it? I wanna say Armstrong sculpting. You just kind of sculpt it. But now I kind of have the tools, I feel like, in order to do it even better. So, um, and Ian and, Ian and uh, Jimmy, I wanna show you guys this, what I've just kind of been doing recently. Um, so this is this weird finger thing I was showing last stream. I still have this up and going. Let me hide this. Let me just get rid of, oh, did I, I, did I stitch these? No, okay. Oh, come on. Oh, I hate that. Okay, try again. Oh, I gotta auto group these. What am I doing? There we go. There we go. Delete hidden. Okay, so if I have this sphere, and I'm just gonna make sure symmetry is turned off, jam this into the center, and squish it to be like a, a piece of blocked out hair of some sort, right? Well, I'm gonna actually work on this hair a little bit more, in, but I, I can show you how I started it, right? So you just, yeah, finger brush, <laughs> finger brush. Yeah, he's with his hair. He's like, he's like almost petting him, right? Um, Sirdar, that's a huge question that I can't really get into. Um, I do teach it in my course. I take you through the entire workflow from start to finish. But um, as I can answer the question on a high level, which is just essentially what you will do is you have to retopologize the character. So it's a low resolution mesh, and then you will transfer all of the detail from the high resolution to the low resolution by baking the maps. You'll bake all the color, the normal maps, and all that kind of stuff. And yes, it gets very, very technical, but that is how you would go about doing it. So, but I go through that entire thing um, in my course, that, that whole workflow, but it's a lot of, it's a lot to explain uh, during a live stream, but hopefully that's, and you can text, yeah, that's, you do your UVs and uh, yeah, it's for making game characters. Yep. So it's right above me, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Uh, link if, uh, Neil, if you wouldn't mind posting a link. I just called you Link, Neil. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's your new nickname, Link. <laughs> there you go. Does that post over on YouTube? Neil, I don't know if it does or not. Okay, so say I have this, you know, this section of hair blocked out, right? Just a, I don't know, just this kind of light workflow of hair. Keep it nice and clean. Thanks, Neil. You're awesome. Okay, so, um, and I basically want, I use uh, Sculptress, or I can just start with this, but I, I like it a little more dense. Yes, it is for beginners. Uh-huh. It takes you from beginner all the way to expert. Okay, so I want to flood fill this here. Let's let's go with a lighter color here, so you can see the topology. 
basically take uh, this uh, Tessimate and we'll just flood fill this with Sculptress. So it's just kind of this dense mesh now. And then I grab an Orbs Cracks brush. Orb Crack. I keep calling it Orbs Cracks, but it's Orb Crack. Orbs, Orb Cracks. There you go. The second wor word is plural. All right. So um, basically, if in the Orb, I, I, are the Orb Cracks brushes free? I can't remember if they're free or not. Okay. So I'm going to turn to the Zebro gray material so we can see the, the surface a little bit more. But you can get a really big brush with this Orbs Crack brush, Orb Cracks brush. And then you can start just cutting in and finding some happy accidents. You can go in, like, uh, this is, the regular brush looks like this, right? And, and I can turn on Sculptress Pro too, so it'll give me a little more geometry as I do it. And see how clean you can get it to look? And that is essentially, um, that's in the course, if you guys are a student already, um, during that uh, weekly challenge, we talked with Hector. And that's where I got this idea from, is from Hector. This is the way he does it. Yeah, Orb is free. Awesome, thank you. Um, so if I hold down Alt, it will pull it out. So I can do a stroke right along the edge of the other one, right? And then I can make a smaller brush and go down like that. And yes, it will make, it will possibly make a peak in between the two, but then you can just go in and just smooth it out, you know? And so then if you want, or if you need to, you can come back in with the pinch brush and just make it even cleaner and pinch that, that peak just like that and make it even cleaner and see how this, this one is kind of messy. You just want to make your brush smaller because the pinch brush will drag the geometry and actually pinch it so you can get it even cleaner. Okay, so now that you have that, the new thing that I've added um, recently is the uh, move with AccuCurve or, or even snake hook with AccuCurve. Either way, it works pretty well. So I'll grab the snake hook brush. So the regular snake hook brush, if you start to pull out this, say that now I just made this into a strand, right? If I wanna pull this out like this and make it into a strand and maybe push this one back, it works okay. But if I turn AccuCurve on, it will give me this super nice peak and make it super pointy like that. See, I can just kind of pull this out and make it peak. Yes, AccuCurve is new. You can find it under um, the Brush Curve AccuCurve menu. So Brush Curve AccuCurve, it's right there. Okay. And this is... What, what makes this method so nice to doing hair is um, it will 3D print really well, right? Even, like, depending on how um, high definition your printer can print. But you can do it this way without um, laying down a whole bunch of hairbrush strands, right? The, I really like using hairbrush brushes like Dylan Ekron's brush, Fantastic, or Macon's hairbrush. Those are really, really great. But the, the problem with those is actually kind of what I did here. Um, the strands are the same thickness all the way down. They don't really end in a nice peak and you don't really get overlap. Okay. So if, you, if I go back to my, my, my devil guy, you can see how... Um, let me switch back to, well, I guess I can keep this turned on. Yeah, let's go back to Skin Shade 4. So um, you can see how I can get some overlapping, um, overlapping hairs. And if I was using a hairbrush, I'd have to kind of pack all those hair strands up behind the ear. And that's really tight and small. And then as they come out, I would have to like scale them out and make them bigger. But um, if I'm just using the Orb Cracks brush and I'm drawing those curves out, it's much easier, right? Because I can just draw on the surface and, it, and I can pinch them as they go tight behind the ear. It's really easy. I think you just saved me lots of hours of work. Awesome. Yay. Thanks. You're welcome, Ian. Uh, what size monitor? This is a 27-inch Cintiq. It's about a two- or three-year-old Cintiq. Yeah, so hopefully you can use it, Jimmy. I don't know. 
Yeah, it's it's super tight, super tight. I love it. I just love the the ease of which you can just kind of lay in hair and just clean it up if you need to, you know. So like yeah, all this stuff I just laid in just by drawing it. So see how this is really blank right here. If I want to um and it, it what I like about it is it, is it maintains the overall flow of the whole thing. I don't know how this got dented right there. It looks dented. Um but say I wanted to add another strand and have it kind of overlap and un go under itself. I can grab this uh the orb orb brush right and then just kind of run it down this through here i can go from one side to the other so say i wanted to start here and just bring it across and go like that so so then all of a sudden the hair looks like it's it's twisting right nice mr mars that's a good one yeah orbs it it's so versatile you can use it for so many things. There we go. See that? So that would be fairly difficult. Not really difficult, I would say, but it wouldn't be that easy to do if you already had hair strands going on in there, right? And I can even bring it, bring one from over here, cross, and go down like this. And just kind of emphasize that one. And see, now it looks like this hair is going and tucking up underneath that set of hair. But this is bothering me right here. I don't know what happened. Let's see if I can clean it up. See, it got dented somehow. It's like, it's like it got dropped. I'm just using move. Kind of straightening it out. Okay. So anyway, Jimmy and uh, Ian, that, that's my new kind of favorite way of uh, making hair. So it's like a whiter, smoother. No, it's it's almost like a, uh, it's almost like a ma cut. It has some some of the um, benefits of ma cut. And that's essentially what this pinch brush. This pinch brush started as a ma cut brush. And Ma is, uh, was developed by Malicus the Black. I'm trying to remember his name. Um, I met him at the ZBrush Summit one year. Really cool guy. And this is kind of warped. I don't know what happened here, how it got warped. What did I do to it? Hey, Cargo, how's it going? Does a lazy mouse with R1 do something when active? Um, I don't know what you mean. Okay, I, I'm not sure what I did to this. I'll have to go and clean it up later. Okay. Hey, Didi. I need to enhance the grooves on an old... Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, Michelangelo Hernandez. Yes, yes, thank you, sir. sir. Yeah, I... I remember his first name was Michael, but I couldn't remember the rest. He goes by Malicus the Black. <laughs> I just looked at the promo video for your course. Exactly what I'm looking for. Oh, nice. Okay. So I'm going to basically pull this out and do these hairs on this end. Um, without seeing the model, I'm not sure how I can enhance the grooves on an old model. I'm not sorry about that. I don't. I don't know what what that would look like or what you would be trying to do. This out maybe with AccuCurve. Try that. Um, I would ask. So next time, uh, Paul Gabriel is streaming. 
he knows a lot about that kind of stuff. I think he's been streaming once a week pretty recently. But he actually works for Pixelogic. I'm just a volunteer here. Um, you could do maybe, yeah, it's it's really difficult to, I, I, I'm just guessing what you would do because I was, I was gonna say you could do a mask by cavity and then do a move, move along normals to bring those in further or out further. I don't, I don't know. Okay. I'm going to get this to curve upwards and I'm just going to do a couple. Make this whole thing thicker overall. So Jimmy, can you say what you're working on lately? You're probably not, huh? I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> Usually working artists can't say what they're working on because it's NDA, which is different than NFT. Let me trim this up. You know, I might smooth this whole area out and just redraw it, recut it. It's really wonky. Okay, I want to try this um, Orbs Cracks 2 brush. Somebody was asking what the difference is between all of these brushes. I'm just going to show you really quick. <clears throat> okay, so let's go back to this Zero Gray. It's top secret. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, that's awesome, Jimmy. That's super cool. Yeah, the mouse is going to show up at your door and be like <laughs> nearly done. That's awesome. Well, thanks Brutus. Okay, so actually uh, let me turn up, let me turn up the resolution so you can see. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's your so you're going to you're going to it's not for uh Disney. <laughs> it's for yourself. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so let's let's do the BDS first. B D S. There it goes. That's Damien Standard or Dam Standard Brush. Okay. Nice. I can't wait to see him. Okay. So the Damien Standard Brush looks like this. Okay. It has a nice valley and the, the tops are rounded. Okay. And I can go even small, smaller. Okay. So it's a detail brush. And the difference between the Damien Standard Brush and this detail brush that I have on my in interface, see, this is just more subtle, and but it it almost works the same. It has some some smaller little quirks that are slightly different. All right, man. Thanks for hanging out. See you later, Jimmy. I appreciate it. Okay, so Orbs Cracks brush looks like this so you can see it has a peak on the outsides as well as the valley on the inside that's the biggest difference between those two and then if you look at um orbs cracks 2 it's very similar but it has a rounded valley right the valley is not as sharp down there and then the third one is the opposite well it actually has a soft valley and soft peaks so that's a, it's almost like my cloth brush. So if you look at this cloth brush, see how it's it's pretty similar. See that cloth is a little smoother, but very very similar. Okay, so that's the difference. Have a fun meeting. <laughs> Let's go back to skin shaded four, but thanks for the question. I've always, I haven't really uh, looked at the difference between all of them that much. <laughs> okay. So my favorite is this first one. So are these the same but different alphas? Yeah, I'm sure I, I'm, there might be more to it than that. I didn't make the brushes, so I don't know the details of them, but um, yeah, I just, I just use them. I'm 
just kind of trying to clean this up here. I'm trying to give myself hairs to like peaks and valleys to kind of riff riff off of. Oh, so right now you have late. Yeah, I do have lazy mouse with a radius of one, right? And if you crank this radius, it basically stretches out the line. Like, see the number back. It's you know, I I kind of uh, think about lazy mouse like um, like tying a rock to a string and dragging it through the sand by the string. That's kind of how it works, and it just helps you smooth out the, the curves and the arcs. But what, so what was your question again, Philly? I'm trying to remember, does lazy mouse with R1 do something when active? Yes, so, um, but with R1, it just barely smooths it out. So it's only a length of one. It just barely helps you with this, the smoothing. But I don't know exactly how it helps that much because it's built into the brush. Again, the orbs crack brush, I didn't, I didn't make that brush, so I can't tell you specifically how it was made or what it's doing. I just know I like it. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it that long. I'm going to go back to one. Okay, I think I have enough here. It's pretty warbly, but okay. This gave me enough hairs that I can then come in with the snake hook brush and pull them out, make them spiky. Oh, turn off RGB. R1 also already makes the stroke smoother and with less Z impact. Oh, thanks Brutus, I didn't know that. I would just experiment with it and see what it does. Okay, so this is exactly how I use um, Move Infinite. So see, I'm trying to push this in with the snake hook brush with AccuCurve turned on, and it's giving me this weird, uh, that's not what I want. So I'm gonna turn on Move Infinite. And I just gotta make sure that this is not directly behind it. Um, so, because it's infinite, it's going to shoot all the way through everything. And that's not what I want. So, but it helps when I'm trying to pull the center in and these out. Curl them up. Oopsie, it's like I, I accidentally touched this. <laughs> That's probably how I messed up that spot right there as I was using Move Infinite and I accidentally overlapped it somehow. But it will make these wide, so I gotta be careful. Just fix it with move instead of move infinite. Okay, now these are two, two same sizey and even. I gotta add some chaos now. Let's see here. I think I want this to be bigger down on the bottom. Yarzar, hello.
Yarzar, your name reminds me of an old Atari game called Yar's Revenge. You guys remember that game? I like that name. It kind of looks like a hand, almost. All right, Philly, thanks for hanging out. Uh, oh man, I'm messing this up. Uh, there's also this uh, hidden smooth brush that is called um, smooth directional and you can find it in the brushes menu under smooth 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 where are you right here smooth smooth directional right here and that all that does is it smooths only down the direction that you're stroking so if i hold down smooth and i go in this direction it's it's not going to get rid of the peaks and valleys it's only going to smooth it out from side to side as best as it can anyway see it doesn't it hardly adjusts the profile at all but it's smoothing out so i don't want to i don't want to go left and right see how it smooths it out bad that way but if i if i smooth down the length of the stroke it's going to smooth it quite nicely or it should anyway that's the philosophy behind it. <laughs> okay. Because there's some of these lumpy bumpies I want to smooth out. Yeah, you just have to be careful of the direction. Okay, let's see what it looks like on him. Yeah, they're a little small. I, I need to bunch some up together and make them a little thicker. Kinda spread them out a little bit more. Anyway, something like that. Okay, before we go, let's see, it's 148 here. Um, I kind of want to start blocking out his body a little bit before we go. I know he does have this little tuft of hair on the top of his head I still need to do. And I also need to uh, start to combine all these pieces together because this is still just a block out. It's still just made of pieces. All these little pieces. Okay. So I'll, st I'll start blocking him out. Just, I'm just going to make it up, essentially. Make sure I'm on the right. Okay. And like I said, I want to I want to give him a big upper body. And really big, uh, like, deltoids and big arms coming to those little thin, really evil-looking hands. I love those uh, bony, bony fingers with the, the fingernails. But I picture him being really heavily, like heavy upper body, going down to this really, really skinny little butt and legs. And sometimes it's fun to make stuff up and design it on the fly. Like this is the only image I have of this guy. So I need to dig into my anatomy knowledge and not that I have much of that, but I have enough to be dangerous. Can have kind of this high curved back. And I'll I'll adjust it as I go. All right. And 
if you want these um, these primitive brushes, I give them away for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. This is how I block out most of my characters, and this is how I teach how to block out my characters, or how to show you how to block out your characters this way. Thanks, Neil. Okay, this will be interesting because his head is coming out from the front of his body. I have to, I have to act as if his kind of back is hunched and figure out how everything's gonna work. All right, Christoph, thanks for hanging out. Okay, let's see. And I want his um his legs to be like a like a fawn. Like his pelvis box. All right, give him a little speedo. That's a little too long of a torso. Well, let me get his legs in place and then I'll decide how long I want his torso. <laughs> get his arms in place all that stuff that all I don't know how all that's going to add up until I get him in place yep Tom hey how's it going yep I, I was already talking about that I want to give him fawn legs and a big old devil tail How's it going, Tom? Whoops, gosh. What are fawn legs? Um, like deer legs. Uh, like like the back legs of a a quadruped. You're still here. <laughs> yeah, that is a positive. Um, like the like the fawn on uh on Narnia. Put it up higher, I think. Make this come down really low. Yeah, Mr. Tumnus, there you go. That's his name. You know, the fawn. 
Cumnus. I forgot his name. <laughs> oh, Tom, you hurt. Terrible. Oh, sorry, I had to stretch. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Like a F A F A U N from mythology. <laughs> yes. So he'll have legs that go like. Uh, let's see if I can draw. Kind of like back, like this. Like that. Pawn legs. <laughs> hey, that wasn't a bad drawing. <laughs> Usually I totally suck at drawing. Seder, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so many different names. Okay, let's see. I gotta kind of figure this out here. Figure out how these collarbones would go. <laughs> I always do that. I mean, like I keep forgetting to switch to my move brush. So this is another another w time when AccuCurve comes into play. This is when I just want to kind of scooch. Scooch is a real word, right? Scooch this around without skewing it. Okay. I know this is not anatomically accurate at all. I'm just trying to make sense of it a little bit. Excuse me. Okay, and then, yeah, I'll put the traps on. They're gonna come from clear up here and go all the way down his back. <laughs> let's let's get his uh, pecs in there. These are quite heavy. Uh, collarbones let's shrink those down what did I do oh that's what I did I smoothed them with um, sculptors pro on turn that off you want to sculpt one do it do it oops It's weird how it's uh, smoothing on a square. What's going on there? Okay, what in the world? Something is up with this. Oh, because I have, yeah, thanks Neil. Smooth directional is on. <laughs> I'm like, what? what? What is happening? Let's do smooth stronger. Yeah, I'm going to turn it down. That's still too strong. There we go. Ah, that's much better. Smoothed it right out of existence. That's what I did.
All right. Yeah, you don't <laughs> you don't realize it till after it's doing something weird. Just like what in the? It's funny too because when you're doing live streams, you don't you don't think about stuff like that as much as you do when you're just alone by yourself sculpting. I'm gonna turn uh, dynamic off. I think. If you find your machine slowing down, just try turning dynamic off. Tends to speed things up or or uh, turn down the smoothing on it. That'll help out. Okay, I think that works. That'll work for what we're doing here for a minute. And I'll Z remesh all this stuff to be closer to the same density. Okay, it's time, but I'm gonna put in some some pecs. Whoa, hello. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if I sit longer than two hours, I need to need to stand up and go for a walk or something. And I can invert this, hit control W. Just to put it in its own poly group. Remember the closer you get to center, the smaller you have to go with your brush or else it won't cross the center. Can't cross the streams. And then I like to pull this up underneath that delt. Get that nice curve. Got 200 people watching today. That's pretty good. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. It's always fun to have sculpting friends. <laughs> Okay, now to close this gap even tighter, you can do um, inflate. Yeah, Brutus, no worries. Appreciate you asking them. Thank you. Keeps the conversation going. Okay. And again, if you're... If you're wanting to try out my brushes, you can always go grab them over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Hopefully I can update it soon. And uh, you can also check out the course. Um, I do an online course, it's called the 3D Character Workshop. And uh, I'll, I should be updating it pretty soon. I need to, I need to really curl this, uh, this peck to go up under here more. There's a lot I need to do. <laughs> Anyway, I think we're off to a decent start with it. And then I need to bring, anyway, there's, this, this area has some problems that I need to fix. <laughs> it's getting there. All right, you guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with me on another Monday. Happy sculpting. I hope your week goes wonderful and we will see you all next Monday where I will most likely be continuing this guy because I'm having a lot of fun with him. Um, might make his neck a little bit shorter as I get the body put in there. So get his, get his fawn legs in there and get him a big old devil tail, you know, all that good stuff. So, all right, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, Mark. Thanks everybody. Take care. Um, and, uh, Thanks for hanging out. All right. We'll see you later. Have a good one. Till next week. Happy sculpting.